technology goes a little sideways, skew up and whack. Hey, but hey, let's be positive. Come on, let's be positive. Just stop right there. No negativity. Let's be positive. LBP, let's be positive. Let's be positive. Our man Matt Gunn joins us. And don't give me the excuse you didn't answer your phone because you were interviewing some guy from the council or the community board or something like that because I'm not going to accept it, mate. Martin, it was, a, it, was a, it was a young lady, a 30-year-old young lady, running as an independent for our local ward, the Pukaki Ward. Okay. And uh, I've been to a number of these council debates. They give him 150 words to say something about himself or they give him a 30-second time to respond to a question and nobody knows anything about them so i don't know how we're supposed to vote and meet anyone so in my role as the radio station single person working here i'm giving them all a chance to actually speak properly okay does is there a is there a deputy chair of the community board who gets extra airtime because of the position she holds in your community no extra air time at all, Martin, but I get extra <laughs> sore air time at home after the meetings. So what we're talking about here is Matt's wife, Tracy, <laughs> as the deputy chair of the community board. Matt, you meant to I give me I think she might end minutes, up a chair mate. because uh, the actual chair is not running again. Uh, the deputy chair is running, so she may end up in a, uh, a one spot higher earning a few extra dollars. Let's be positive about our All Blacks. And I give him a B minus so far this season. Lachlan's shooting me down in flames. He said deserves a D. Let's be positive. A D? Yeah. A D? That's what he reckons. I said B minus. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say Australia got a, an F minus. So, um you know, in that context, where they were almost an A the week before, maybe, maybe Martin, that uh, the D is a B. If Foley had to kick that ball out, I'd be saying it would be a fail of a season. No question, because we would have won four, lost five, and, you know, who cares what happened at Eden Park? But, you know, the fact that we've actually won three in a row, clawed it back against Argentina, I don't know, mate. I mean, here we are scratching no, the straws with either. the All Blacks. I mean, it just, you know, aren't we just used to just bending your pants down and giving you some, aren't we? It's us, isn't it? Well, I was just, I was just totally, I was just totally let down. I mean, absolutely flogged from go to woe. We were below average, right? Uh, we didn't show any signs of anything that might suggest that we were ever in the game. Um, Twenty-three matches in a row, we've lost at Eden Park, and year on year on year, new players, new coaches, uh, new management. Uh, reviews being undertaken, and we never get any better there. We never get any better there. And yet the week before, had we have won that game, the championship was within our grasp. Yeah. And then we show up the next week, and we, and, and we look like the Warriors. Well, at least you won at Eden Park, but it just wasn't with the rugby. You won on Sunday, the football, mate. Be positive. That's the name of the slot. 11 years without a match and then two within less than a week. Yeah. I mean, how, how, how do they, they, uh, they organise these schedules? Look, game one, okay, I think it was a bit of a competition. Game two, not really, and that was a replaced team. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. The Aussies replaced their team, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um, a B team for game two. Is Danny Hay going to hang around? Is he going to go? Contract's coming to an end. It's not an attractive option, is it? The all whites. Well, it's not when, the, 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 not when the administration doesn't get your games organised. And when they no, do get no, games, mate, you've got 24 hours to prepare a team that's just flown in from all over the world. Yeah. I and, mean, look, and, Matt, I thought we'd sorted mockery, this bloody out. Well, and, and to be judging him on those results, oh, two years off, yeah. then a couple of games, and then another six months off, um, and he says, well, you know, this is the biggest problem with it is, you know, I get these bikes for 16 or 18 hours, after they've travelled yeah. to try and get them together to compete against the team that's going to the World Cup, it's a joke. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the answer is. There's never seemed to be an answer. Um, the well, the only answer way is to really... do a review because that's what New Zealand football are doing. They follow New Zealand rugby and they're doing a review. I mean, here's an organisation. I was say, the answer really is to do a review. Yeah, well, of course it's... Do a, a review yeah. on what it is that is required for people to want to play the All Whites. 
And do they want to play a team? Are they testing themselves against a team that doesn't play for two years together? Well, the answer is no. Clearly, the answer is no. The review's over. I've done the review. If you want to be competitive and play more games, you literally have to play more games. That's it. You have to have a team. Other teams see some value in playing. Mate, this is an organisation, Matt. I think that was throwing some crumbs, wasn't it? This the is, Aussies playing this two is, games. This is an organisation that's crying out for cash. It don't have any money, right? So why are, they, why are they spending money on a review? How many people are employed at New Zealand football? Surely you've got enough intellectual now, experience in the game and administrative ability in your jobs to sit down and review yourselves, don't you? Otherwise, why the hell are you in those jobs? Oh, this is what I hate about no these sports one. administrators, mate. Stick your neck. It's not even sticking your neck out. You get hired to do this, to run the organisation. And here you are saying, we're not capable of running it. We're going to get somebody else to do a review. Well, get those people to run it then. Yeah, but that's not how it works anymore. Oh, no, it's not Everybody it works. gets in consult. Oh, no, Everybody needs an outside opinion. And you know what? I don't, I'm not even behind, worried mate. about... I'm not even worried about independence. You know, you need to look at yourself and say, this is where we need to improve. Yep. We don't need anyone to tell us no, that we can't so. get games if we never have we games. We already know that. We've I known mean, it for 10 years. We know that. Yeah. We know that. How could you cock up you after know, the 2 two ten World Cup? It's incredible. New Zealand football did this after 82. They're doing it again. Joseph Parker, mate, where to now for JP? JP. Nowhere. I don't see him going anywhere. I know he thinks he's still got some fights left in him, and he may. He may be that guy they throw in the ring and we know he's going to get beat. You know, he may make some money that way. But is that a boxing career? Do you think at any stage in the last, oh, let's say, 10 fights, that he has shown that he has the knockout ability no. and the strength no. to win big fights? No. The answer is no. I've said it over the last few years. I'm not knocking him as a young bloke. I know this is what he does. This is his career. He wants to box on. But the fact is... He's not going to make it. No. It's too late. Yeah, that's it. It's just simply too yeah. late because he's not good enough, Martin. And he's never come out looking peaked and ready to rumble, buff. You know, and I'm not knocking him. I'm not fat shaming him. But, you know, you see some of these guys and they look like you could crack a brick on them. Not Joseph Parker. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if that's the extra 2 or 3% you need is that physique. But even David Tua, when he came out, he was a bit flabby. But at times, even though he didn't have a six-pack, you knew he had the power. Oh, mate, he had a knockout punch. You knew punch. he was strong That's enough. the thing. He did a knockout punch. The NRL, are the, two, are the two best teams going to play the final? Well, as I said the other day, they've made the final. So they probably are the best teams come finals time. What's interesting is the Eels have won twice over the Panthers this season in, well, one close match and, and one bit of a blowout. Um, but they lost in the first round of the playoffs. And yeah. So you'd have to say, the Penny Panthers, you'd have to say, 1v4, the Penny Panthers go in as favourites, right? Can the Eels win? Well, there's not a single skerrick of me that wants them to win, Martin. No. My brother's a Bulldogs. He's a, a, a Eels fan. No, well, I hate He's been man. a para fan no, them, ever no, since case, we them, were kids. No, I hate them, mate. I cannot case. support no, them. Okay, no. And I have to go with my mother's team, the Panthers. She was on there when they were the um, chocolate soldiers yeah. in the hideous, the most horrendous football <laughs> was, jersey ever worn, the brown and white. That was terrible, wasn't it? You remember that? Yeah, I do. How did they ever sell them? I don't, I don't know. Well, they sold them when they won the grand final, mate. That's when they sold them, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, I know. They will. They will. I, look, I see them winning. I see them winning. It was a pretty comprehensive win in the first round of the playoffs, wasn't it? 27-8. Yeah. I, I think they win it this weekend. Okay. Sell our crowd. Yeah. That's got to be good news, doesn't it? Let's be positive. And Jimmy Barnes is playing, I heard. Let's be positive, finally, that... So NASA fired a dart. They let it go 10 months ago, 7 million miles, mate. It's like the size of a fridge, and it's travelling at the speed of sound times light times nuclear explosion. I don't bloody know. But I've just been sitting there thinking all day, you imagine if Bernard Foley was on the controls, just as we're getting there. We've got the live pictures on. Everyone from NASA's gathered around. The whole world's watching. Bernard, it's over to you. We're counting it down. What? Why did the camera go off before it exploded? Look, like, I don't even know if this has happened. Oh, no, I don't, don't even say, know if this is no, real. Don't, don't, look, come on, mate. Don't give me that the moon landing didn't happen. I know that didn't happen, okay? There's no space look, probe look, on Mars. Look, I know that, but I believe they've this. Sent up, they've sent up, as you say, a freak-sized object with perfect clarity that far away. It hits an object which was travelling at 22,500 kilometres an hour, 
They tell me it weighed five million tons, and this fridge <laughs> with 570 kilos of explosives on it is going to knock it off its course, and then when the big one is actually coming for us, they won't panic and miss it, no. and we all get devastated. I watched the movie Don't Look Up last week, Martin. Do not believe these people could knock that comet off its orbit. We are doomed if that thing comes. <laughs> and if they can do that so clearly with a camera, fix the warriors. Yeah, there you go. So there you go. In a nutshell, if you can do that, NASA, next project is opening day of the season, Planet Cameron, land one on that.